Now we've got an understanding of dynamic mappings, explicit mappings, and dynamic templates, it's worth having a look at some of the field types that we can use in our mappings. There are some field types in Elasticsearch that you might not have used in other storage technologies before. The documentation gives a lot of detail on all the different field types that you can use, but I'm going to go over some of the more commonly used ones here. There are a lot of different numeric types that you can use. One very important thing of using numeric types is to only use the precision that you need for your data. If you're only ever storing numbers between say one and 255, there's no point using a long that goes all the way up to two to the 63. There'll be a lot of wasted storage if you do that. A short, for example, will go all the way up to 32,767. If you need even less storage, you could use a byte, which goes up to 127. If you need to store bigger numbers, you could use an integer, which goes to two to the 31. Decimal numbers follow the same pattern. There's a double, which is a 64-bit floating point number. A float is a 32-bit floating point number. And a half float is a 16-bit floating point. For text data, there are two main types, text and keyword. Text is for analyzed text. We'll come onto this in a lot more detail in the section on full text search. At a high level though, text going into a text field is analyzed by a set of character filters, tokenizers and token filters. This doesn't store the actual text that you put in the field, it stores a stream of tokens. These tokens are used to do the matching when you query the field. Using a text field, you can look for individual words or tokens inside a piece of text. You can even narrow it down to text in certain positions in the field. When you query, you can rank the results based on how well they match your search criteria. There's a lot of detail to full text search I'm going to cover the essentials in this course, but it's a full area of research in and of itself. A keyword field also stores text, but that text is not analyzed. They can be used for exact matches, they can be used in ordering, and they can also be used in aggregations. A field type you might not have seen before is an IP type. You can use this field to store individual IP addresses. You might think it should be okay to store this type of data in a keyword field, but where this becomes really handy is how you can query an IP field. You can query IP fields using a range. For example, you could get all the documents where a certain IP field is within a certain subnet. You can also store and query geodata using Elasticsearch. You can store individual points like lat long coordinates or entire shapes. Again, this is really useful when you combine it with the querying aspect. So you can find all documents with a geo point within a certain bounding box. Another uncommon field type are range fields. There are several different types of range fields depending on the type of data that you're storing. Integer range could be used to store an age range, an income range, or a temperature range. An IP range can be used to store a subnet or a network. You can then query for documents where the IP range contains a certain individual IP address. A date range can hold two timestamps. You can then query for documents where a date range contains a certain date. And there are other numeric type ranges as well. This is a float range, but there's also long range and double range. How you index documents with a range field is slightly different to how you'd index a normal document. Let's create this index. When you index a document with a range field, you need to enter two values. You provide the greater than or equal to, and then the less than or equal to. These form the minimum and maximum values of the range for that field. The same pattern is used for float ranges, double ranges, and long ranges. You have your GTE and your LTE with your minimum and maximum bounds for the range. IP ranges can be done in a couple of ways. You can use the GTE and LTE properties just as we did for the int ranges, but you can also use CIDR notation. Geo points use a similar format to the range fields. Instead of using GTE and LTE, we have lat and long. These are the latitude and longitude. You can also provide a comma delimited string of lat long coordinates, an array of lat long coordinates, and other specialist formats. We'll come on to how you query all these fields in certain ways in a later section.